Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I've got some M103 footage for you. First game on Sunset Coast and the second one is on Pilsen. Now, I put grinding this off for quite some time because I really heard it was mediocre at best and not all that good. Now, it got some buffs in August and I'm not going to go through all of them, but one of the biggies was the turret roof being buffed to 50.8 millimeters, which now means to overmatch it, fully overmatch it, your gun needs to be bigger than 153 millimeters. So, before, back in the day, Russian 122s could overmatch the roof of this thing. Now they can't. The Russian 152s could only partially overmatch this thing. Which means now, if you get this hull down, it is quite a beast. It's not impenetrable, it's not a conqueror, but oh my word, is it fun. Now using all 10 degrees of gun depression, it makes that cupola quite small to hit. And I've been finding during the grind that this is a bloody good tank, to be honest. Really good. Now, in this video, I've got the top turret, but I've only got the first 120 millimeters. So it's not as accurate, doesn't fire quite as fast. But oh my word, is it good. Now, their team's kind of given us a very, very easy one here. They, they've pretty much given up 60, 70% off the map. So I'm gonna come up to this nice little perch here. This 120 mil is actually quite accurate. As long as you let your, you know, your shots fully aim in, I am finding it to be quite a good gun. And the reload on it seems so fast for the alpha that it puts out. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep backing up here, get ourselves hold down. If that E100 has the big 150, he can't overmatch my roof, which is great. But he can obviously pen me in other places. So my whole point here is I want to try and get hold down and jerk and jank a bit and just, just basically try and irritate him and take as much health off him as I possibly can. Now we're in the early stages, we're already up to 1500 damage. I'm going to go for his lower plate here. And we are using the standard AP as well. I do switch to heat a bit. I, I did find with the 105, I was using quite a bit of Prem in the tier 10 games. Uh, it's not the best pen in the world on that. So I did end up having to use the Prem. And even then, it certainly felt lacking. But this 120 is proving to be quite the tech. I'm really looking forward to getting the top gun on it, and I have a feeling I'm going to end up keeping this thing, because so far it's been absolute means to play. Now, we're not really doing a lot other than staying in this position, but what we're doing is we're, we're currently helping our team to just stall them out, and we are stalling them out big time. Their team has not really progressed any further than the halfway mark of the map. Most of them, unfortunately for them, have just sat back far too hard, and then all of them pushing down one line. We see the fun police get one through it, set him on fire. That's absolutely beautiful. That's karma. That is absolutely wonderful. Now, this E100 here, give me the side of it. Sorry, just nice, easy shots. We're already up to 3,500 damage, and we've not really had to move anywhere. We got very lucky with their team composition, the fact that they didn't try and take the middle area. Now, the middle area on this map, I find to be very, very key. Once you fight through them, that position I was just in, I tend to find it like a secondary position. So now we've got a VK45B. Uh, it's got its turret faces away from me. Don't really see many VKBs out in the wild, really. Uh, but pop food, trying to get a reload through, uh, through out of the way, and I want to get one through his lower plate. Fortunately, the angle is that as he backs down, makes it an, an auto ricochet, to be honest. But he is going to try and come round on me, which is quite silly, because I do have friends. Whereas he doesn't. He's now all on his own. He's got a medium coming up behind him, um, and we're just going to try and pop some shots through him as much as possible. Get him tracked, and hopefully this bat chat start unloading. Yes, it does. Gets one. Gets two. Excellent. Good times. And now there is a Waffentrager E100 up there. Now he's back in a way, which sort of says to me, possibly on a reload. So we need to get over there as fast as we can. During this game, I didn't have the top engine. In fact, I think both engines, uh, both games, I have the only the, the second engine. So... We're not as quick as we should be. It is a 34 km an hour top speed. Um, it's not overly slow for such a big heavy tank, but with that second engine in, now I've got it, you can tell the difference. The power to weight ratio is far superior, um, and it is a, it's quite nimble, really. Even with just that 34 km an hour top speed, getting yourself between cover that quick acceleration uh, always makes it more fun. 
So we're waiting for this 100 to pop round. Unfortunately, I might fluff my aim up there. But you see that turret bouncing is absolutely fantastic. But he does manage to get one through it as I eye up a shot on his polar. But hey, Night 5 E6 comes round and ruins his day. Overall, a pretty nice game for a tank that's not fully upgraded. 4,534 damage, walk away with three kills, and we do get the ace tanker as well. Now, as you can see, 1,870 block there. That was when I was positioning myself correctly. When I was exposing too much of the tank, they were going through the lower plate because of the angle of them looking up at me on that cliff. But we bounced a waffle off that turret, uh, and we did bounce an E100 off that turret. It is very, very nice to play currently. So this second game, like I say, we're Pilsen and we are on a tier 10 game. And I'm going to push down to uh, C3 into that sort of heavy area, heavy contest, fighting over that corridor. Now, as I played this more and more, I really did start to get quite confident in this thing. And like I say, I could see this being a keeper, that wonderful... Um, Boat style pull on it is great for side scraping. It's got nice big tracks like most of the American mediums. And there we go. We just soaked that up. Not a problem at all. Now we're going to go down here and, uh, like I say, as you can see, it's quite agile. Try and get a shot through that T30, but it's just too quick for me. But we are in that aggressive position a lot faster than everyone else. And it just makes us ready for the enemy to start crossing. And we have got a mouse in front of us. And like I say, there's a Jetto and another VKB. Now, the v I'm not too sure what that 4202 was doing. The VKB does actually pose me a fair bit of a problem. Now, it looks like he's got not quite a stock turret, but it's got that Porsche, as we call it, Porsche-style Coppola, which is a weak point on the side of that turret. As you can see where it sticks out, 14 moves before a fire, where it sticks out. Same as Tiger 2. Think e Tiger 2 stock turret. Um, think E75 stock turret. Have that nice round area on the side of the turret. That is the Capola, and it is a weak spot. Now, like I say, he does pose me some issues here. We are wasting time. We've only done 434 damage, and that was what we shot into that 4202. But now we really need to start thinking about what we're going to do here. Try and time it for when he backs up, but we still don't make it. I'm getting a little bit bored. I'm getting a little bit antsy. And if they don't start presenting themselves to me any sooner, I'm going to have to think about moving. And right now, really, I should be thinking about moving. We are continuously firing shots and not having any effect, which basically it's the same as not firing any shots all it's doing is costing me silver so i think what we'll do we we'll go for another sort of shot on the um vkb and we're going to need to start making a decision now what we're going to do we get one through that cupola and we have a little look what there is now i know there's a mouse there there's a type 5 heavy there both of them are going to be difficult for me to penetrate without using premium rounds but they are both slow now the Type 5, I really, really don't want to hit me because that is a huge loss of hit points. But at the same time, I kind of want to push through the right on the right with my team, getting through the buildings and seeing what I can take out there and help them with that push. And then one of three pushes around there. I'm not too sure what he thought he was doing. <coughs> As a little sneaky medium pokes out from between the two. I believe it's the FV4202. The guy that kind of made a bit of a suicide charge earlier. Now, I've seen a few of them pushing through, and our team does seem to be stalling. If I can push through these doors, then I'm able to flank the Reds that have already gone through into that area. And so, Leroy Jenkins, time's up, let's go. We managed to get across, we don't get shot by the Type 5 or the mouse, very lucky there. But that position was doing nothing for us, and that's something you need to recognise sometimes. You may be in a powerful position, but if it's not helping your team in any way, is it actually powerful? And in that instance, no it wasn't. We've not put out much damage, we were firing shells into the void, it was definitely time to make a decision and move away. And now it's paid to our advantage as we take the bat chat out, putting us over 2,500 damage. Uh, and now we've got the back end of what I believe is a T10. Uh, sorry, 113. It's very small, the preview on these replays, so it can be a bit of a nightmare. He backs up, extremely confused as to what's going on. I don't actually think he saw me. Uh, but fortunately, I take a terrible shot, get it through up the Glacier's plate, and it just ricochets. So, now it's time for us to start pushing the advantage. I know that mouse and that Type 5 are over there. Don't really want to face them head on. I want to be pushing around to their side. So, what we do is we're now going to try and flank around this building and see if we can get shots into their side. We don't need to use heat uh, and... Also, you know, I'm, I'm capitalising on their weaknesses rather than trying to face them with their strengths. 
Now as that mouse holds our team up outside, I get one through his side, putting his hit points down. And now again, that, that simple move from that power position we were in has now given us a chance to get more damage and help our team out. Whilst the mouse is distracted, we we'll go for his uh, lower plate, as it were, but we do end up tracking him. At this point, I'm going to try and get one more through his lower plate. We do bounce, and it's now time to switch to the premium. Don't be afraid to switch to the premium. I know it's a bit of a thing at the minute by some people, but honestly, it's a mouse's front. I don't know what else you would expect to do. It's pointless wasting time there, so you may as well switch to your premium rounds and get it gone. Out he goes, back onto the standard rounds, and now we've got this Type 5 up here. Come on, fella. You saw it was coming. What's going on? Let's get out of the way. Excellent, thank you. Now, again, standard rounds on the front of that Type 5 Heavy was never going to work. I should have kept my premium rounds loaded, but he does get shot down, and we do manage now to push round, and there's only three tanks left. Looking, lucky bounce from the Grill 15 there, but again, this turret is now absolutely fantastic, and this tank is an absolute joy to play, in my opinion. I've been dreading this grind so much, and now I'm so glad that I've gone down it. T32 is an absolutely beautiful tank to play. This thing is fantastic as well. And um, yeah, like I say, it's definitely going to be a keeper. T32 is a definite keeper. That thing is it's just a joy to play. It's such a good tier 8 heavy tank. Uh, I know Mr. Sidescrape would say it's without that the best tier 8 heavy tank in the game. Now, sitting in front of Progetto 65 with our tracks off, never a nice thing because if he's fully loaded, he could clip us out. But he does get the Frighteners put on him by my teammates and he does manage to back off. He's the last tank left in the game and he will get shut down any second. Now, not a bad game. Like I say, moving, making the decision to move when we did. Um, I maybe should have done that a little bit earlier, to be honest with you. Staying somewhere just because it's a good position, but not actually doing anything, is the same as not doing anything, in my opinion. So that is why, after a couple of misses, it was time for us to move on, cross over, and try to make a different play from a different angle. I know I could have possibly gone through the warehouse but now looking ahead 7201k probably would have rinsed us and that 60 uh, Progetto 65 would have also torn us a new one if we'd have done that so I do feel I made the right play in there uh, but the M103 honestly absolutely fantastic I, I should have played it sooner would I have enjoyed it as much without the buffs? I'm not too sure, but I'm definitely, definitely loving this tank and I would definitely recommend get your grind on get through it what a machine so, if you enjoyed that, guys, give me a like. If you didn't, give me a dislike. Uh, thank you all for watching. Honestly, every watch, share, subscription is just a massive, massive boost to the channel. So, thank you all so much. But until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you all soon.